Hi all, my name is Ryan and welcome to my channel What The Pop, where we discuss pop culture in general and Buffy a lot. The usual spoiler alert, I may talk about things in these analyses that relate to future plot points, so if you haven't seen Buffy at least once and you don't like spoilers, I suggest you leave and come back once you've seen it all. Today, we continue our look at Season 2 with Episode 11, Ted. A plot summary. Spike and Drew are presumed dead, so vamp activity is low. Buffy walks in on Joyce kissing John Ritter, and it was so passionate they broke a glass. Joyce introduces him as Ted, a software salesman. He charms Willow with upgrades because she's a tech nerd, and Xander with food because he's a puppy. Buffy immediately doesn't like him. Her spidey sense is tingling. Ted suggests mini golf. Buffy tries to say no. Xander is a total douchebag and says yes. Buffy beats a vampire into a bloody pulp before staking him as her subtext rapidly becomes Tex. She rants to Angel, he offers being lonely sucks. Giles talks to Jenny, she doesn't want his puppy dog eyes. Buffy cheats at mini golf, Ted gets a little intense, threatens to slap her. Buffy tells Joyce the next morning she doesn't believe her daughter, parenting on point. Buffy recruits the Scoobies to find out what they can about Ted. Buffy stalks Ted's work, finds out he's going to be married in two months. She confronts Ted and Joyce at dinner. Says she'll kill herself if they did. She goes hunting. Vamps are selfishly not presenting themselves for staking. Vampires. Here, vampires. Comes home to Ted in her room, having gone through all her stuff. He threatens her. Then he hits her. Then she hits him back, over and over again. He falls down the stairs. Crap, he's dead. Cops show up, ask what happened. Joyce says he fell. Buffy says she hit him. Buffy is feeling the guilt. Scoobies find out the secret ingredient of the cookies is Demotorin, a Buffy universe tranquilizer. Jenny and Giles get attacked by a vampire. She accidentally shoots Giles with a crossbow bolt. Ted is resurrected. He and Buffy fight. He's a robot. He knocks Buffy out, goes after Joyce. The Scoobies five find Ted's four past wives. They're all dead, literal skeletons in his closet. Buffy comes to, Joyce is now unconscious. Buffy takes Ted out with a cast iron skillet. The Scoobies find out the truth of Ted and walk in on Giles and Jenny making out. Ted, 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 okay. So let me start this by saying that I used to hate this episode so much more, more so even than episodes like Teacher's Pet, because I really, really, really hate Ted the character. I hate him with a fiery, burning passion, and when he is talking to Buffy and being such an absolute prick, I want to hit him so hard. And I dislike him so much that I actually think this may be my least watched episode of Buffy, even more so than episodes I consider bad, like Bad Eggs. And John Ritter in this role is so good. He coloured my view of John Ritter. Uh, he's like Imelda Staunton as Dolores Umbridge in Harry Potter here. That's how much I hated this character. Unlike most Americans, I had had almost no exposure to John Ritter prior to this episode. I had never seen Three's Company and had only seen him appear on random episodes of various shows. To me, he was one of those actors that you see in various things but never know their name. But his acting here was so good that I disliked the actor. If I saw him in anything after this, I would immediately cringe, thinking, I hate you so much, Ted. And it wasn't until his last show, Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter, with Katie Seagal and Kaylee Cuoco, that I was all, well, this actor is actually quite funny. But having watched this episode now with a critical eye focusing on characters and themes, I have to admit that this, uh, that I quite like this episode now. And that was a massive surprise to me, because this episode was in my list of top three episodes that I really don't want to rewatch. Ted being a manipulative, paternalistic creep, his smarminess, his drugging of the Scoobies and Joyce, his plan that effectively involved getting rid of Buffy, his increasing aggression and antagonism to Buffy out of sight of everyone else, that rise in malice that made him seem particularly evil, and just the whole build up to Buffy snapping and killing him, and the guilt she feels over it. It was all so well written, such a well told story. 
And looking at it now with critical eyes, I realise that the reason I dislike this episode so much is not because it was a bad episode, but because it achieved exactly what it intended. And it's such an important episode for establishing who Buffy really is. But I'll talk about that later. Probably my favourite thing about this episode that shows the importance of Chosen Family is how everyone rallies around Buffy. Xander, Willow, Giles and even Cordy are there for her and immediately start trying to dig up and get to the bottom of exactly who Ted was. Because they know who Buffy is and know there had to be a reason. Even Joyce, who can't talk to Buffy after the incident, immediately tried to protect her daughter, saying Ted fell, that it was an accident. One of my least favourite things in this episode, and something that the other Scoobies, including Giles, are guilty of far too often, is not listening to Buffy's concerns in the first place. They know she has precognitive dreams, that she has abilities beyond just being super strong, fast, and healing quickly. In Welcome to the Hellmouth, Giles said she should be able to hone, to sense vampires. Buffy never gets that ability, but she is certainly right about a number of people or monsters that she has a feeling about. We see it here with Ted, we see it again in Season 4 with her roommate, and there again the Scoobies dismiss her instincts. Of course, the other great thing in this episode is Jenny and Giles get back together, and we get this moment of absolute badassery from him. <sighs> Oh, no. <laughs> nice shot, lady. He literally pulls a crossbow bolt out of himself and stakes a vampire with it. Like I said, badass. The contrast between Giles and Ted in this episode is night to day. This episode does have one massive issue. It pretty much goes against everything that makes Buffy such a great show, as I detailed in the video linked up here. It's a return to the episodic nature of TV, where something happens but the status quo is reset at the end of the episode. Nothing has really changed for our main character. As I said in Lie to Me, Joss believes that life is basically just a series of choices and consequences. And here, Buffy's choice has no real consequence. It's essentially all undone with some minor learnings about herself. I actually think this episode is mostly to give us a basis to judge Faith upon when this situation unfolds for Faith next season. And yes, I do think Joss was planning this storyline um, this far in advance. We see in Season 3 that he had already planted the thoughts for Dawn in Season 5. And the scenes with the detective here are also important for the season finale as the detective will reappear when it seems that Buffy may have killed Kendra. Uh, this episode establishes that Buffy may have a history of violence, so prejudices the police against her later. I've already said it a number of times within these analyses, but Buffy holds herself to the Spider-Man code. With great power comes great responsibility. And I said in Welcome to the Hellmouth that one of the reasons Buffy continues to be the Slayer is because she feels the moral weight of that responsibility. She understands that there are supernatural threats and that she has the strength and power to deal with those threats. To her, it would be immoral not to use these abilities to protect people, knowing what she knows about the world and the supernatural threats to it. Buffy here is irked by Ted, Joyce's new boyfriend, and when she finds him sitting in the dark in her bedroom, having gone through all her things, including her diary, and threatens to have her institutionalised, it's the last straw. Uh, he has threatened her, overstepped multiple boundaries, and then hits Buffy, and she unleashes on him. She hits him repeatedly, and despite Joyce asking her to stop, she hits him again and knocks him down the stairs, killing him. We find out later he's a serial killer and a robot, but at this point in time, Buffy thinks she has killed a normal person. Now, arguments could be made that Buffy acted in self-defense, that Ted hit her first, and hit her forcefully enough to send a slayer flying. Uh, but none of that really matters, because Buffy herself isn't looking at it that way. Buffy feels that she has lost control and killed a regular person, and we see how she reacts to that. Of course, we get this line from, from Cordelia, our what if Buffy. I don't get it. Buffy's a slayer. Shouldn't she have... What, a license to kill? 
Well, not for fun, but she's like the Superman. Shouldn't there be different rules for her? It's a sentiment that gets echoed by Faith in Season 3 when she does kill the Deputy Mayor, and Spike in Season 6 when Buffy again thinks she's killed a regular person. Earlier in the episode, Buffy wailed on a vampire, beating him into a bloody pulp while ranting before finally staking him. Giles comments on it, asking her if anything is wrong, but she declines to tell him. This is remarkably similar to a situation in Season 3, when Buffy and Faith are patrolling together and Faith wails on a vampire before eventually staking him. One of our first warnings that Faith may be following Buffy's path in this episode. Last episode, Buffy told Kendra that emotions were a total asset, that that anger gave a slayer fire. And here, the next episode, we see the negative aspects of that anger, a loss of control that has resulted in someone's death. Ultimately though, this episode isn't about emotion, being a superhero, whether she acted in self-defense or not. This episode is about Buffy's morality. With great power comes great responsibility. When the cops arrive and are questioning Joyce, she tries to cover for Buffy. She says it was an accident, that he fell. Buffy immediately takes responsibility for her actions, actions in consequence, by saying, I hit him. She doesn't try to deny her role in Ted's death. She accepts that she lost control, that she had been waiting for a chance to do it. When he hits her, right before she unleashes on him, she says, I was so hoping you'd do that. She reveled in it. She lost herself in that emotion, and essentially in that moment became that which she fears the most. A monster. Something that takes joy in death. That enjoys the killing. Last episode she was contrasted with becoming an emotionless assassin. Here we have her becoming the opposite end of that spectrum. Someone who enjoys the violence. And when the dust has settled from this, she is horrified with herself. She feels extreme guilt that she has lost control in these abilities and taken a human life. Most importantly, she shows maturity when she takes responsibility for it. And ultimately that highlights who Buffy is. Someone who is moral and who takes responsibility for her actions. Ted in this episode is a horribly paternalistic and sexist depiction of traditional family values. Values where the man was in charge and the woman did what she was told. We know right now from the outset that this is not going to sit well with Buffy. I've already mentioned how both Spike and Buffy are breakers of, breakers of tradition. So Ted trying to exert any control over Buffy in a traditional manner was always going to result in them butting heads. The issues start small but are clearly there. Ted saying things like, don't I always tell you what to do to Joyce? And then the skin crawling, daddy's here. Infantilizing women was an insidious way that men kept control over women. I talked last episode about how women were often dismissed as being hysterical, too emotional for responsibility and stressful situations. And infantilizing them was a means to keep them in control. Things like, don't worry your pretty little head about it. Ted oversteps his bounds overriding Joyce's parenting decisions and tries to infantilize Buffy, calling her little lady. When he catches Buffy cheating, we get this scene. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Why don't people see that? It's just a game. Right, it's just a game, do your own thing. Well, I'm not wired that way. And I'm here to tell you, it is not a game. It does count, and I don't stand for that kind of malarkey in my house. But I guess it's a good thing I'm not in your house. Do you want me to slap that smart-ass mouth of yours? Ted reveals his true colours to Buffy, uh, resorting to intimidation and threats of violence for compliance. Ted thinks it's his right to assert control here. He expects obedience. It's what women in the 50s did. They loved and obeyed their husbands and fathers. And he expects women to obey him. Of course, he said this, these things to someone who isn't intimidated by him at all. Contrast this to Giles and Jenny. Throughout this episode, Giles and Jenny offer a nice counterpoint to Ted and Joyce. Giles makes an excuse to check on her, see how she's doing. 
Jenny, being Jenny, comes straight out and calls him out on his flimsy excuse to check on her. And she says, Rupert, I know you're concerned, but having you constantly poking around, making little puppy dog eyes at me, wondering if I'm okay, you make me feel bad that I don't feel better. Don't, I don't want that responsibility. Giles acknowledges this and leaves. He doesn't try to exert any authority over Jenny. Uh, he doesn't try to own, have any ownership over her. And he doesn't dismiss her feelings and just tell her to get over it. He acknowledges what she says and leaves to give her space. Apart from the psychotic tapping of the club on his leg, probably our first indication that we shouldn't take Ted at face value is when he declares right is right and wrong is wrong. One thing we've learned so far this season is that nothing is ever that black and white and there is always that grey area in the middle. When that full on paternalistic and misogynistic side rears its head and he first tries to blackmail then hits Buffy, we pretty much get Buffy's viewpoint on chauvinistic men when she punches him repeatedly and kicks him down the stairs. But there is also a warning in here for Buffy. Ted exhibited power and control over the Scoobies and particularly Joyce by drugging and manipulating her. He constantly made decisions for them, believing it was his right to do so. It is very easy for Buffy, in her role as Slayer, to take a paternalistic viewpoint over situations involving her and her friends and using her power in deciding what should happen and what should be done. Because she's the Slayer and she believes it's ultimately her responsibility. The warning for Buffy is that just because she is the Slayer and often has to make hard choices, it doesn't mean she's always right or that she knows best. This issue will come up in a few, a few times, but significantly in Season 7. The drug that they mentioned, Demetorin, isn't a real-world drug. It's made up for the Buffyverse, most likely to avoid infringing any trademarks. It's most likely the Buffy version of Demetrin, Demetrin, a brand name of a benzodiazepine derivative drug used mostly to treat anxiety. My favourite quote here is this from Giles. I like a mini pizza, but I'm telling uh, Buffy, you, I have... I, I believe the uh, subtext here is, is rapidly becoming uh, <coughs> a text. Are you sure there's nothing you want to share? Thanks for watching, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. It really helps the channel. Uh, you can also help by subscribing to our Patreon. If you disagreed with anything I said or have anything to add, please put it in the comments below and I'll see you next video.